Good morning, everybody. Um, it is one of those days again that I'm not looking so good, but you know, I, I just I've got potential, and I hope you know that. <laughs> um, this fat, fat, I feel like it's been a weekend, but it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday that I was down in Nashville at the Women's National Women's Leadership Forum Conference, whatever you want to call it. And um, it was a great time. I, I was with my uh, ministry partner, Ginger Moore, and we had a wonderful time and just great bonding and um, great thinking about the ministry stuff and um, just, just, uh, it was just a great time. Oh, and if you know, if you're on my Facebook, you know my obsession with boots with fur. And so I thought I'd just walk those by so you can see my boots with fur. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, if you're not aware of that, you can go to my Facebook and check that out about my obsession. Because I got some and then I peer pressured Ginger into getting some. So anyway, okay, digressing. But um, when I was at the conference, um, I think something that spoke to me most um, was I just kept going over and over in my mind because it was a lot of the speakers um, points um, was about being a servant of Christ and what that means and is that all good is it always good and does it always mean death you know I don't know but it brought me to thinking about Mary and I, I just got some verses that I want to read and then expound upon a little bit, and maybe place a little bit of a challenge. But I, I'm in Luke 1, where Mary receives her calling that um, you will be the mother of the, the Savior of the world and um, from the angel. And, you know, when he first comes to Mary, she is like, whoa, she is scared to death. And the angel says, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. I'll come to, back to that verse in the very end. But finding favor with God, what, you know, what does that mean? I know that if an angel were to come to me and say, you have found favor with God, I might be a little shocked that an angel came to say something to me. But you know what? To be honest, it might be um, a great possibility in my life that I'd be like, really? Well... I might be something that, hmm, God's found favor with me. I've just been waiting for you to tell me that. It just is a possibility. That might be my thoughts. But not, not, with, uh, not with Mary here. And, uh, but God has found favor with you. Pretty good. Then in the ver at verse 36, the angel says, now look, look, look. Elizabeth, your relative, who they thought would never have any children, guess what? She's in her sixth month of pregnancy. She is pregnant. So there are some strange things going on in the world. You know, just you being pregnant without being married, you know, that, that's pretty wild. But even your relative who was barren is now pregnant. She's in her sixth month. And Mary's response to that is such a humble response. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. I am the Lord's servant. Okay, she just got this major news that you're gonna that she's gonna have a baby, and it's the savior of the world, and she's got this huge responsibility, and she's not married, and she's gotta go tell her mom and dad. And and her response is, I am the Lord's servant. Wow, wow, when I get shocking news, good or bad, do I immediately say, I'm the Lord's servant. Whatever he brings to me, I'm the Lord's servant. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, so she, she um, packs up her bags and she's going to see Elizabeth across the country. And so she and Elizabeth have a conversation and it's going pretty good. And then Mary bursts out in a song. Makes me think of like Sharpay in High School Musical where, you know, they're just talking and then all of a sudden the spotlight comes on her and, um, I don't think it was that way with our, our humble Mary, but anyway, 
I want you to see something. And it's called Mary's Song, or the fancy word for it is called Magnificent. And um, listen to verse 46, 47, and 48. It says, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of, my hum of the humble state of his servant. Okay, before I look this up and kind of inspect it and tore apart that verse, that, that verse 48, for he has been mindful of, my, of the humble state of his servant. Not knowing anything, I kind of looked at that and I thought, he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. I thought that was Mary saying, God is aware of how humble I am. That, that's what it, when you just read it, that's what it sounds like. But no, that, that's not at all what the verse is saying. It says, for he has been humble, mindful of the humble state of his servant. What that means is that God is well aware of the humiliation that he has called into her life because she is pregnant without a husband and she's a very young girl. And she is saying, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God. For he is mindful, he is aware of what he has called into my life, this humiliation of being pregnant under these circumstances. Now back up one verse. My soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God. Okay, a lot of times when we see this on TV, it's my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God. We don't see any excitement in these people in the scripture. And they had real stinking believe in God relationships with God. So she could have been real monotone like that. But I don't think so. Because my spirit rejoices in God. That rejoices right there, translated in the original language, it means she leaped for joy. She was so stinking excited that... You know, there was a scream, I think. And so when it says, my soul glorifies the Lord, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices, leaps for joy in God. For he is aware of the humiliation I am going to face because I am pregnant without a husband and I've got a not, not she has to convince, but she is going to tell this story that the Savior of the world is within me. Now, how this relates back to you and I is we don't know what God has called into our lives and what he has ordained. But when he brings things into our lives, even the bad things that we don't like, um, we have to realize that when he brings it, when he allows something good or bad to come into our lives, it is because he has found favor with us. In, in 2 Chronicles um, 16, 9, it says, The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to find somebody that he can assign a task to, basically. And so when he finds you worthy of going through a miscarriage, of going through something that seems so terrible and the world says you know that's meant to harm you but God says I mean it for good even if it's bad then our we have to realize that God has found favor in us to allow us to go through that and we our response needs to be I am the Lord's servant and then that may be your initial response and then you're once you let all that sink in and you realize what that God has a kingdom purpose and what you're going through, <clears throat> then hopefully you can get to the point where you say, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices. I jump for joy because my God is aware of what I'm going through, good and bad. Ah. Oh speaks good to me. I want to be the Lord's servant. I know you do too. Let me hear from you. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. Like my shirt?